Thank you for joining in. I'm your host, Christian Najera, and I'm going to be changing the name to House of Fire Ministries. I just want to put it out there before I do. I want to give everyone notice before I do change it. So that way, when I do change it, uh, you guys can already know in advance. And once again, I want to thank all the listeners for joining in and listening to my teachings, I hope in some way it has ministered to you, uh, has spoken into your life, perhaps um, gave you, giving you confirmation about something. And, you know, today what I want to talk about is whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice of the pastor or God? Because when Jesus came and he mong- and he walked among us, the Pharisees and the Sadducees that had this tradition that they were putting these traditions as the uh, as the authority of God. That's why Jesus said that uh, you do aside the word of God, the commandment of God. To keep your traditions. And you see these traditions that Jesus was speaking of. They were actually in, 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 in the Torah. But they were making it the authority. Like the final authority. And we're living in a, in a time where the church has a tradition. And what I mean by the tradition. The bylaws and the governing of the church. And how they do things. And it's good that we have those governing laws for the churches, you know, the bylaws, uh, to keep a a structure or an order. And these bylaws that they use, the churches, uh, they're in accordance with, 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 with the Word of God, right? But when we put emphasis on the governing of the, of the laws of, of the church, uh, we're making it uh the authority we it's kind of like when government tries to play god and we got to listen to them we got to do what they say they have all the answer for us right it's like you know their policies their mandates become the authority of the people and so that's what the church have they have done and I think unconsciously, uh, a lot of pastors have done that. And a lot of pastors, they do it very manipulative and deceptive. And they say, oh, well, you got to obey. And now you're disobedient. And so we do it because we think, oh, we got to do it because, you know, the pastor, you know, he's, you know, he's the authority. God has put him there and we got to listen to him. And they use And they use that to get away with a lot of things. But you have to be confident of who you are in Christ. And what I mean by that is that there's going to be times that God is going to leave it up to you to make a decision. Just because you're in a church and the church has all all these bylaws and governing governing laws, it doesn't mean that it's the authority uh, in its entirety. Because if pastors are going to use that To say, well, you know what, these are the bottles of the church according to the word of God and it's the authority of God. Well, they're to be disobedient to the word of God because, you know, the Bible does not give us a pattern that we need to follow. It gives us, um, throughout the scriptures, how to obey God. And we follow that pattern. The Bible gives us the pattern, but it doesn't give us, you know... Uh, a set of rules how to do it, right? So when the pastors are, are leaning too much uh, uh, to their uh, bylaws of the church and the governing of, of, of the church, it becomes authoritative, uh, authoritative. It becomes a totalitarian church. And so whose voice are you hearing? Are you hearing the voice of of the pastor or are you hearing the voice of God? That's a question that you got to ask yourself. Because you, when you come to the Lord 
and you pray to him, you got to ask the Lord to search your heart. And say, God, how me to make it, you know, how me to know why I'm feeling this way? How me to know why I'm not feeling comfortable? How me to know why I'm feeling confused? How me to know why, you know, I feel wrong about this? And what he's going to tell you is this. He's going to tell you several things. He's going to tell you that I call you to do this. You see, there's three wills of God. The good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Anything that we do for God is good. It's a good will of God. But it doesn't mean that it's acceptable or perfect will of God. And that's what you need to know for yourself. What will of God is the right one for you at that moment? Because it's okay to say no. It's okay to say, you know what? I'm not going to submit to that. Because God is not calling me to submit to that. And I feel okay about it because it's not the acceptable or perfect will of God. You see... It is God who gives the gifts. It is God who calls. It is God that opens the doors. So whose voice are you hearing? Are you hearing the voice of the pastor or are you hearing the voice of God? I mean, you see, they're not going to contradict themselves. Don't get me wrong. Because when you go to church, you know, you know that God has put that pastor as the authority over the church. And so however the, the pastor decides to run, you know, his church, you submit to it by not being contrary, contrary to it, by not being argumentative about it and speaking against it, because you're not going to like everything and it's, and, it's, and it's fine. You know, you're not going to agree, you know, with everything that he says. And the pastor needs to understand that. So if the pastor recognizes your calling and your leadership and you're not in accordance with something. The pastor has to understand that he needs to also hear from God and not so much depend on his bylaws. His bylaws are there just to keep in order. But ultimately, the pastor needs to hear from God too. And he respects your leadership, the pastor. He's going to honor that. Because if the pastor put you in a position, it's because he trusted you. So he needs to trust your uh, judgment calls as well. Because I hear pastors, you know, uh, make talking points and make reference to uh, that. I don't want you to become like me. I want you to be your own individuality. And they make all make all kinds of references uh, of that kind. But what I notice is that they want you to do it how they tell you to do it. And they gave you... Uh, you know, they, 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 they loosen up the reins a little bit, but in reality, you're doing it the way they want you to do it. So those are just talking points to make it sound good. So the question is, whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice of God or are you listening to the voice of the pastor? Who are you really submitting to? Are you submitting to the bylaws and the governing Laws of the church, or you start submitting to God, because it's okay to say no. It's okay to say I don't feel comfortable with this. It's okay that you speak up. It doesn't mean that you're going against them. Is that you have to understand that when you pray to God and God tells you, "I'm leaving it up to you this decision," and you have to be confident in the decision that you make. Because what they're going to tell you, the pastor's like, oh, you know, you need to submit, you know, you need to go through this because through, you know, because of this, you're going to learn something out of it and uh, something good is going to come out of it and God is going to be glorified. They're going to, all those are just talking points. But you see, you need to be confident in whose voice you're hearing and who you're submitting to and whose will you are doing. Because let me tell you something. I'm going to leave you with this. When I was called to be the director of the evangelist team, when I was attending a church back in 2015, I told the pastor I was going to help him out for a year, and then from there we'll see how it goes. So for the first six months, it went well. 
But then after that, I started to see a lot of controlling, a lot of manipulation, and I just didn't like that. That was my first ministry. And then it bothered me so much because, you know, I was taught that you need to submit out of it. If something's going to come out of, uh, out of this, if something's going to, something good, good is going to come out of it. You're going to have a testimony to give later on and all those talking points. But you know what the Lord was telling me? Chris, did I call you to this? Did I call you to be the director of the evangelistic team? Did I call you to submit to this? And that was confusing to me because this is the first time I heard something like that. And you might say, oh, that was the devil. Well, you can say whatever you want, but let me share with you. So let me backtrack a little bit. Back in 2014, the Lord was ministering to me and giving me a series of, uh, uh, showing me a series of things. And he was calling me to go and evangelize from town to town, from state to state and he wanted me to go to a specific state in mexico and so you fast forward back you know 2015 i'm calling to this ministry to be the director of the evangelistic team and throughout that year god is ministering to 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 me you know the same thing and so by the end of the year i stepped down from the ministry i told the pastor thank you let's give someone else the opportunity but I think it's time for me to step step down. In actuality, in all actuality, I wanted to tell him, man, you're being controlling, you're being manipulative and all that. But I went home by myself and I said, no, I'm going to just step down. And that's what I did. So when I stepped down, that desire and passion to go from town to town, from state to state, to go and preach the word of God, I didn't know where I was going to stay at. I didn't have no clue. I never traveled to those towns in Mexico. And so that desire was so intense in me that I said, okay, Lord, if this is you calling me to do this, then you're going to have to confirm it. Because if it's up to me, I'll leave right now. So I forgot that I prayed that prayer to the Lord. And then like two weeks after, I got invi invited to a Bible study. And 90% of everything that was taught on this Bible study is everything that I have been feeling. Everything that God had been speaking to me for the past two years, it was a series of things, not just one thing that was, uh, you know, that was, that dealt with, you know, evangelism, you know, taking off from town to town and all that and many other things, you know, it was, it was mentioned in the Bible study and there was no coincidence. So I told the Lord, okay, after that, I told the Lord, okay, Lord. I'm going to leave. So I packed up my stuff. I, I was, I financially, uh, you know, financed my men, you know, this, this, this trip. Uh, and so I took off. I didn't know where I was going to stay at. So this is after, you know, I stepped down from ministry right after I stepped from ministry, not even a month had passed. Okay. I stepped down from being the evangelist uh, leader or, or director. So I take off. I don't know where I'm going to stay at. I, so I, uh, I'm out of state, right? And then three days of me being, you know, out of state, I, I woke up in the morning, you know, this pastor that I didn't know had let me stay in one of his houses that was, uh, uh, that was, that was, uh, empty. It was vacated. He let me stay there. He didn't know me. I told my purpose. So I, I was there for three days. And then when I woke up on the third day and early in the morning, the spirit of God told me, told me it's time to move on. So I, I packed up my stuff in the car and I left and it was a little bit before nine o'clock and I was out in front of uh, the night in sandstorm. And as I'm there standing outside, I look to my left and I see this, these, these two big doors shut with the chain link around it. And I look up and I see this banner and, and in this banner it said, we, train prophets and as i'm looking i look to my right and i see this door open and i'm thinking this is the office so i go in and i and i see this room it's not it's not an office it's just a room and i see chairs in a circle in the middle of the room with two ladies praying they look up and they ask me do you need something do you need prayer and i said yeah you know i can use some prayer and I said, but I see that they train prophets here. She said, yes. 
And I said, well, I come here to get a prophetic word. I didn't tell her anything about me, my purpose, my reason of being here. I don't even think I gave her my name. And this is what she said. She pointed at me and she said, the Lord has called you to evangelize, to go from town to town and state from state to preach the word of God. I was blown away. Blown away. It is God that opens doors. You see, I could have chose to stay there and go through the process of learning something out of this. And it would have shaped my attitude. Oh, I would have learned something. And I would have. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. But if I wouldn't have listened to the voice of God, and if I, I wouldn't have sought the will of God, I would have never experienced what I experienced. And that was my, that was the day that my ministry was born. From that point on. You see, you got to know, first and foremost, whose voice are you listening to? Whose will are you doing? And this message is not for young people because you guys need structure, spiritual structure, and discipleship. This is for mature Christians. Now, you might be, you know, an adult and receive Christ, you, you know, you yeah, just receive Christ in your life. You know, your mind is more developed than a young man. And so I just want to encourage you to listen to the voice of God. Don't get caught up with the bylaws and governing of the church, how they do things. And this is how we do it. And it's all fine. But it's not the whole will of God that they're doing. They're also seeking the will of God. You know, and if the pastor understands what I'm saying, then he's going to have the right attitude towards it. Serve your church, love your church, be committed to your church, submit to the church, but your ultimate submission and commitment should be to God. Learn to hear from God. God bless you.